Morning, everybody. It's the Grad School Podcast. Joining me again today is uh, the Reverend Dr. Matt Richard. Thank you for being back here with us, Pastor. How are you doing? Good. Good. Good to see you, Harrison. It's great to have you. So uh, we've been uh, picking through what does Jesus say about stuff? Uh, and we kind of set this one up. We're coming back around to it. We talked sort of last time about, you know, where does, uh, where, where do the, the, the church and the, the state and the family all meet? And today we're going to kind of get into the nuances of it. We've got a fancy word for it called vocation. So pastor, what does Jesus say about vocation? Yeah. So the vo- vocation, it, it's, it's, it's what does it mean, right? I mean, it's it's. I, th- I hear the word vocation. I think vacation, right? <laughs> right. And, and uh, I think I think the best way of of describing vocation, and we see this throughout all the scriptures. Um, we 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 see this with the different roles that we have, right? And so I know there's there's a there's a Lutheran uh, theologian in our denomination, and he talks about it being masks of God. And I like how it's phrased that that we're given different masks, or uh, the way that I've taught this before is different hats that we wear. And so uh, right now, um, the hat that I have on is going to be uh, the hat of pastor, you know. And then later on today, when I'm done, I just mentioned after I got to get my my son after a little later on, and so I pick up my son to take him to driving class. Well, then this hat comes off and I put the hat on as what? Dad. Dad. But as I'm driving my son, I'm also what? The hat of citizen because I'm following different laws and regulations with driving and speed limits and all that. And then uh, later on, I got to come back and, and take care of a couple of things. And I'll be the hat of husband. And so for my wife. And so we're, we're, we're wearing multiple hats at multiple times. And these different hats that we wear are ways in which we ultimately uh, serve our neighbor. And that's ultimately when it comes down to uh, loving God and serving our neighbor. And this is the way that Christ calls us to love our neighbors that are around us in our different vocations, our different roles. Right. And there's a lot to that because, I I mean, first, I... Sometimes the hats we wear sort of overlap and, and like you need to be dad, but you're trying to be pastor. You need to be pastor, but you, you need to be dad. And, and there's a tension there uh, to sort it out. But it also is, is kind of a gift uh, because you said these are the ways that, that uh, God wants our neighbor served which means that there's a promise attached to it that, you know, you being pastor or or dad isn't strictly sort of stuck on your ability to manage your time correctly and do all the right things perfectly, but rather this is God working good through you. You kind of mentioned a Bible verse to me before we got going on this too, right? Yeah. I think a good verse is Ephesians chapter two, verse 10. Um, Excuse me, throw voice going on a little bit here. Uh, Ephesians two 10, it says, for we are, Uh, Let's see if I see with my glasses off here. Uh, For we are what he has made us created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before us in in advance to walk in. Uh, I know one translation, one loose paraphrase is that we're works of art created in Christ Jesus to simply walk in these good works that he prepared in advance. And so if we think of from the perspective that the Lord prepares good works and that we simply get to walk in them. Or uh, we think of that parable that Jesus tells in the uh, gospel of John, where we are branches and he is the, uh, the vine. And, and apart from the vine, we can do nothing. And so uh, I think it's been said before that, that as a branch, we don't, um, we don't produce fruit, we bear it, you know, and mm-hmm. it's, it's something that, that it just shows forth that we walk in. And so maybe the better question would be is, well, where, where are these good works and prepared in advance for us to walk in? Well, they're right before us in our vocations. And so uh, when the dad gets the, uh, gets the nudge in bed and that the baby's crying and there needs to be a, what, a diaper changed, uh, all, of the, all the dads have had that. And it's like, ah, well, guess what? That's a good work that's been prepared, prepared in advance to walk in. Um, when the student gets an assignment at school and assignment is to do that school in the vocation as a student, that's a good work that they get to what? to walk in in advance has been prepared for them. And so these vocations that we have are ways in which, again, we serve our neighbor and they're ways in which that we walk in these good works that again, have been prepared in advance for us. It really sort of calls attention to the masks idea that that God puts on a mask that looks just like me. And it's, it's funny looking, but he's going to still get good stuff done through it. Um, That, that, you know, when he has set up uh, not only uh, the, the calling, but the specific neighbors to take care of and the specific ways that it would be done. And then uh, by the power of his gospel actually make us love doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I've heard it said before too, and I just love this. This is again from this, the same theologian. He said, you know, uh, today God healed me, you know, today God protected me. Uh, Today God provided for me. 
Um, and, and how did he do that? Well, he, he, he healed me through the doctor, the vocation of doctor. Uh, he protected me through the vocation of a police officer. And so uh, I've said this before. It's like, you know, praise God, he, he healed my back. And everybody thinks, oh, what happened? Well, I went to the chiropractor today, you know, yeah. and bam, yeah. Chiropractor, it wasn't, it wasn't a bam, right? The healed. It was, it was a it was crack, pop. bam, <laughs> a pop. And I'm, I'm healed. And so we can say, God be praised for these vocations. And so if we think of it that way, we look around us all the time. And I was just sharing with you, Harrison, I have a busy day today. So I had to order some food here, you know, and so I got some Jimmy John's, right? So this is a sub sandwich. This is day our daily bread. Yeah. And so I, I said, God be praised. What happened? He's feeding me. He's, <laughs> he's feeding me through the vocation of the farmer who who uh, uh, worked on the wheat uh, for the bread. Uh, God be praised for the ranchers, for the meat that's on here. And God be praised for Jimmy John's and the, the delivery person that delivered it. God be praised that God has given me good gifts through these vocations uh, so that Matt Richard may be fed. Uh, so I'd be sustained in my vocation as a pastor and as a father and as a citizen. And uh, what I forget, all the hats, pastor, father, citizen, and husband. Yep, yeah, that's great. He, he cares for us in this way. And, and then when you start to see the means that it's going through, then, then if you pray, give us this day our daily bread, we recognize God doesn't like zap the hamburger there. He sends a, the Jimmy John's guy to deliver it there. Yeah. Um, and and that's, that's wonderful because it, as ordinary as, as creation looks and, and as scary as it looks, because it's, it's full of sin. There's still somebody sort of steering this ship right now to, to keep this going. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this, is, this is, again, this is the, the good works prepared in advance for us to simply walk in. And, and, and what that does, I mean, it really, you're absolutely right. I mean, we live in this world that's fallen and marred by sin, cursed by sin. And yet, in spite of all of that, uh, a person can serve in a vocation and whether that's serving Jimmy John's or whether that's preaching from the pulpit or whether that's, uh, I, I know for myself, I worked at Walmart for a while in between calls and I took meat out of boxes and I put it on the shelf. And, and for me, it was like, you know God be praised that now I'm am, am, am serving my neighbor by feeding my neighbor this meat that I'm putting on the shelf. And so that my, my vocation has meaning, has purpose. I'm a part of, of this society in this world that God is orchestrating through various masks to provide good order and to sustain, um, as you mentioned before, the daily bread, sustain one another in this culture. Yeah, and it, in, in a big way, it actually helps give us some direction, too, because uh, if I'm going to be honest, the neighbors I like serving the most are usually the ones I know the least. Uh, like, I, I truly know the depth of um, my, my family's sin because I'm there all the time. And so uh, the sinner that I am, I would rather serve people that haven't annoyed me um, because I'm short-tempered or not patient enough. It's so much easier to sort of want to say, I want to serve the hungry kids in Africa because that sounds so noble. And honestly, none of them have bothered me today. Uh, uh, when I, I, I get really annoyed with the good gifts of God that he's put right before me and said, here, look at these. Um, it, it's, it's helpful because it, it gives us shape to the Ten Commandments. So now when I look at the Fourth Commandment, I actually know what shape that looks like. So honor your father and mother looks different if you're a child or a parent. But I have a, a command from God to love my neighbor. And, and here I'm starting to get a picture of how and even who. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, I mean, you connect these vocations to, you know, the different commands, you know, obviously, yeah, the fourth commandment, especially on that. And, and you know, it, 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 you said something there that I think is, is spot on. These vocations give the shape and the form of what it means and what it looks like to love thy neighbor you know, and to what it means. And so to love thy neighbor is, you know, maybe for a husband to change that diaper, right? That is loving thy neighbor. Uh, and in, in, the, in the sense too, the, the vocations that we're given, the masks that we're, we're given are very earthy. You know, I think you kind of mentioned, alluded to that before. It's very earthy, very, um, very much uh, tangible, right? And so uh, oftentimes, again, I think we can, we can conceive of these good works that we are supposed to do. And we think these grandiose things, you know, uh, maybe being a monk or uh, doing a mission trip or having some sort of spiritual experience where, where you have a huge revival or whatever it is and, 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 and so forth. As good as many of those things are. But, but realistically, on a, on a, on a day-to-day grind, and the daily grind of life, uh, the very earthy grind of life, uh, we find those vocations uh, very earthy, serving our neighbor, um, you know, taking the trash out, uh, you know, picking up that trash on the ground, or, or uh, seeing a person crossing the street and helping them across the street. I mean, just, just the everyday aspects of, of our life are different masks that we wear to, to simply serve our neighbor. And then as we serve our neighbor, we say, God be praised that that was a good work that was prepared in advance for me to simply walk in.
uh, to bless my neighbor in the name of Jesus. Yeah, it, it surely adds a value to it too. I, I get to look at this now and say, um, no matter how menial I think it might be to be a student, uh, as opposed to out there changing the world like I want to, there's still a good thing being done here. And I don't need to, to sort of despise the works that I've been given to do for those that I want to do. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of uh, uh, an individual in my previous church and uh, long story short, I mean, I'll really abbreviate it. Uh, we'll just call him, uh, we'll call him Bob, just for, for instance. And, and Bob was... He was in a situation where he had a lot of uh, abuse with drugs and so forth like that and, and uh, came into the church and God be praised. He, he, he was converted and baptized and in the church. And I came one Sunday and this was in a church and, and I said, Hey, Bob, what's going on? And he's like, I'm making coffee. And I said, what? He goes, I'm making coffee. And I looked down and it's Folgers coffee. And he was kind of a coffee snob. And so Bob, he really liked premium coffee. And he goes, he goes, pastor, just to think God redeemed me from crack cocaine forgave me of all of my sins, delivered me from all of this and placed me into the church so I could make Folgers coffee. <laughs> I can make Folgers coffee for my brothers and sisters in this church. He goes, Happy think praise. of that. That's me. And, 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 and he's been a little bit sarcastic because he didn't like Folgers coffee. Yeah, I know, but he didn't like Folgers, but, but at the same time, he was like, you know what? I am called here now. And as, as a fellow Christian, I can make Folgers coffee for my friends that God redeemed me from the, the pit of despair and the pit of hell that I came from and that I can make coffee and they can sip the coffee during Bible study and they can hear about Jesus and they can stay awake from the caffeine. <laughs> it's great. I mean, and, and, and we look at this idea of vocation and the good works prepared in advance for us to walk in. Uh, boy, it gives, it does. It gives a real depth of meaning that, that our works that we do are, 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 are wonderful, glorious works meant to serve our neighbor. I love it. Pastor, thanks so much for joining us on Drive to School. Yeah, absolutely. Good to see you, Harrison. Have a good one.